Alright, hi everyone. So last night uh, I was out having a play again with the uh, the telescope in the observatory, so the RASA 11, and I was just trying a few different things. Uh, I was on the Crescent Nebula, as we can see in the on the screen here, and uh, last night I was just playing around uh, with different exposure settings, uh, the duration, uh, gains and things like that, and uh, this was with the IDAS NBZ UHS filter. So what I did, uh, I pushed the exposure durations uh, ever increasing and I played around, as I say, with different gain settings all the way from zero uh, up to uh, 125 and uh, a couple of uh, points in between. And uh, I tried exposures of two minutes, one minute, uh, five minutes, and uh, I even uh, pushed uh, a 10 minute exposure, uh, seeing as the guiding was uh, looking not too bad. And I was actually surprised at how well the 10 minute exposure came out. So that's what we're going to take a quick look at today. At how much data was gathered with a single 10 minute exposure. So here on the screen is the raw fits file straight off the camera. And all I've done on the screen here is applied a screen transfer function just to see you know, what data is lurking in the shadows. And uh, it looks pretty clean. And uh, I did the usual thing. You know, I spot you know there's a usual gradients we can see coming in the in the image. Uh, so I did a, a background extraction, uh, automatic background extraction on it, and then did a couple of uh, curves tweaks uh, just to the image. And this is what came out after that. So the other thing I wanted to do was try splitting the channels uh, so obviously it's a one shot color camera i'm using so the asi 2600 and uh, i split the channels into the red green and blue and then i applied uh, the automatic background extraction to each of them uh, so this is what we can see for the three channels again this is with the screen transfer function applied uh, the automatic uh, setting and there's the three channels so we've got the red channel looking pretty good there for a 10 minute exposure. Likewise the green and likewise the blue. So after having done an automatic background extraction on each of those three channels, I recombined them and this is what we got using that approach. Now there's no curves tweaks to this one, this was just straight uh, from the recombination. So what I did next was I took the sort of usual basic process and I split the image uh, into uh, the stars and the starless and uh, again I played around with some curves uh, on the images and using a couple of different masks so here's the two range masks on the right hand side and there is the star mask that was generated by Starnet2 and uh, after playing around with the different colours, uh, curves, sorry, these were the sort of the two images that I sort of came out with, with the starless. And obviously you can see on the left, uh, it's significantly more uh, purple. Uh, so I pulled back uh, the blues and the greens on here and uh, came up with the version, this one, uh, which is starting to look uh, a lot better. And obviously I applied these curves uh, with the mask, both uh, inverted and non-inverted to deal with the background and then deal with the, the core of the Crescent Nebula itself. So after doing that and uh, on the, the stars, uh, I just did a, a simple um, a curves reduction or luminance reduction on there, uh, just to pull back the intensity of them slightly. And after recombining everything, Again, uh, we can start to see some of the different variations uh, on the theme. And again, pulling the curves, you can see the one on the left uh, is again uh, a lot more purpley. And after a bit more tweaking, uh, we pulled it back into the reds uh, where it should be. And some nice uh, detail appearing in, in the nebulosity on the right hand side. So we sort of went from this image to this image 
to then down into this image. So after doing that, I then took it across to here and again with some further tweaks, I managed to further reduce uh, the intensity of the, the purples and the blues uh, in there uh, while still maintaining a relatively good clean image. And uh, you know what still you know comes across as amazing is that this is only a single 10 minute raw exposure that's had no calibration frames applied to it and the only colour calibration that was done uh, at the beginning of the process was at photometric, photometric colour calibration. So after tweaking around and everything was looking good, this is where I stumble into another problem that I still need to address. Now the image that we're showing, or I'm showing here in the in the middle of the screen, is what I consider to be uh, the the current current final, and it looks too not too bad there. And uh, this was also having the auto script uh, dark enhance. Uh, whatever it's called, auto dark enhanced detail applied to it, as well as a couple of further uh, curves tweaks to it. Uh, but one thing I noticed was, you know, when I posted the images in a couple of places and opened them in uh, another app, they still look very red, uh, as you can see uh, on the screen, or maybe you can't see it again, it depends on your screen. Now, this is the thing that I've noticed. On my setup here, I've got my main processing window in front of me, but I've also got two other similar models of uh, the, the monitor, uh, but slightly different uh, model numbers. And the ones on the right and the left are significantly different when it comes to colour. They are a lot richer in the reds. Now, I don't know why, uh, it's obviously something to do with the colour calibration of the individual monitors and I think this is having an effect to what I can see when I'm doing my main processing versus what others are seeing when the image is, is finally pushed out. So this is one area that I'm going to have to take a look at and maybe compensate for that in my processing while I'm uh, you know, modifying on the main monitor that sits in front of me. But that's a separate problem and a separate job for another day. I tried to play with the colours and uh, on the, the actual monitor settings, say uh, adjusting the RGB on there, or changing the brightness, changing the colour mode, all these sorts of things, but I still cannot get uh, the three monitors to look, uh, you know, roughly all the same, which is a bit of a hassle. But to come right back to where we started, this is what a 10 minute exposure uh, from the RASA can come up with. So I thought I'd just share that with you and you can feedback your comments on it, see if you've had uh, any similar problems with colour match uh, between what you see versus what other people see or what another application sees etc. Or if you've got a multi-screen setup similar to myself, uh, are you getting uh, different uh, colour matches uh, across the screens and uh, you can post in the comments below uh, how you dealt with it. So anyway, that's it. I will uh, drop up the final image that uh, I've scaled down and uh, popped up. And uh, yep, this is just a single 10 minute exposure uh, from a RASA 11 with an IDAS NVZ UHS, then uh, processed in PixInsight with no calibration screen, uh, calibration uh, frames, and just a straightforward basic tweaks of curves and a photometric color calibration. So on that note, I'll leave you for the time being and uh, thanks for watching and uh, clear skies everyone.